Welcome back to the channel guys, great to have you back. Today we're talking about Crisis, the original Crisis, but remastered for PlayStation 4. It was released at the end of September on PlayStation Network, and today we're going to check it out. I'll tell you whether it's worth you spending the money on getting it, and just what I think of the game overall. So, the game originally came out in 2007, was released for primarily for Windows XP, um, but also took advantage of some of the new features of Windows Vista, namely the Direct X10 engine, or the, you know, the, the sort of firmware, and it also made use of uh, the Cry Engine 2. See you guys at the it was LZ. famous for being a real killer in terms of graphics capabilities, and at the time there was no existing hardware that could actually run the game on full graphics settings. And that was the case for pretty much a decade. Um, so it was said that anytime new hardware was released, they would use Crisis to test it and see where its breaking point was, hence the expression, but can it run Crisis? So let's watch some of the intro footage together and we'll talk a little bit about the sort of basics of the plot. My shoot's gone! My damn shoot is gone! I've got no main, no reserve. Keep it together, kid. You're over water. Your suit should absorb the impact. No man, what's your status? I'm okay, I'm okay. But my HUD scrambled. What the hell was that? I don't know, but you missed the LZ. Make your way to the beach. On my way. Did anyone hit the LZ? You guys are all over the place. Check in. So I go here. Down and on the move. Just as down. You see me, Nelson. Aztec, I have negative visual feed from your unit. Report. Aztec, report. Damn it! Prophet, I've made it to the beach. Okay, so as you can see, we've got Prophet, who's the team leader. Nomad, who's your character. With Jester. And Aztec. Uh, as well as Psycho. So that, that's the full team. So our team is a special Delta Forces unit that has this advanced nanosuit technology that they're armed with. Um, and you land on this island. Your mission is to rescue a group of American archaeologists and collect as much intel as you can as the island, Lingsang Island, has been occupied by the North Korean military. Energy. So on the left of screen you have your navigational map which will show your objectives, it will show placements of enemies and it has an indicator to the far left of it of basically the enemy's awareness of you. To the right of the display, you have your health in green, sure and you have your nano suit energy in blue. Careful, no man. Enemy contact up ahead. Okay, so there you can see that the tactical display on the left, the navigational display, lit up red. Um, basically because I didn't equip the silencer. And when I popped the guy, it didn't get a clean shot. It didn't get, you know, failed to get a clean headshot. So it alerted him. So there you can see the alert status. Here we're hidden under a um, sort of you know, trailer unit or a you know, sort of makeshift office of, of some description in uh, you know like a sort of barracks encampment um, and the guys have just taken someone out so they were aware of my presence and alerted to me there I got a clean shot so I took somebody out and they weren't alerted to me you use R1 to activate your cloak and L1 to activate the armor functions of the suit. 
You can also use the suit's sprint function by holding in and clicking L3 and Rapid. holding forward at the same time. Check those terminals. See if you can access their tactical network. Got it. I'm in. Downloading now. Got the intel. It's important Proceeding to collect run. intel throughout Good the game, no so a significant portion of the game's objectives are surrounded with According to what these reports, to do they evacuated the entire civilian intel. population in a matter of days. What the hell are they hiding? It gets better. Looks like General Ri Chong Kyong is in charge of the whole operation. If you thought this would be easy, think again. Kyong means business, and he's got the KPA's elite special forces unit watching his back. Engaged. Right, so here you can see loading checkpoints is really jittery. Obviously the game is loading new information, uh, collecting save information, you know, save file information at the checkpoint and so on. It can be a little bit frustrating, but it's not uncommon. There are a few games that do it. It usually happens when you're not close to enemies. You're either on approach to a firing zone or you're just changing, you know, uh, into a different portion of the map and it's loading significant new assets and rendering them and things like that. But it can be a bit frustrating for the movement. It doesn't happen too frequently, so it's not a biggie. Here you can see we're going to look at some of the nice sort of graphics features. We're going to take a little swim here in the daytime so you can see some of the details of the, uh, you know, the water in terms of that sort of texture rendering um, and the rocks, sand leaves on the trees, things like that. The game looks incredible. A lot of these details were already in the original version of the game, but taking advantage of more modern hardware, uh, you can obviously render more of them. So here we see, moving around with the cloak, it's very taxing on the energy of the nano suit. So you can be, it, it can play a significant role in it as being a sort of limiting factor in the fluidity of the movement of the game. But it does teach you to be disciplined with its use. This game is part espionage and part, well, you know, sort of stealth espionage and part outright first person shooter. So people who play you know maybe really into games like doom 2016 or doom eternal something like that where it's there's a lot of like um yeah, it's constant movement it's really fast paced you've got to rush down opponents all the time this is a very different kettle of fish to that this game you need to be patient you need to scope out your targets so the suits also got um if you use the d-pad you can access the various uh, sort of visual capabilities of the suit so you can use sort of the binocular function um, and sort of laser and mark out your targets which will add them to your uh, navigational panel on the HUD but y you need to get yourself into position you need to know where your targets are in advance do your recon position yourself and get clean shots basically avoid having all the opponents attack you at once, if you just run in their guns blazing, they're going to overwhelm you. But if you do get into close combat and there's significant opposition, you can use L1 to activate the armor capabilities of the suit. Um, and that comes in real handy, you use it quite a lot. It's bound to happen, so you do, you do get those fast paced action moments. But there's more of a sense of realism than, say, something like Doom. Um, it would play out a little bit more like the likes of Modern Warfare or something like that. The suit gives you a bit of added protection, but not much. You, you need to fire and maneuver and don't get caught in a constant stream of bullets. Or, you know, be well placed behind cover. But yeah, if you fire a shot while you're cloaked, it'll deactivate the cloak immediately. If you lob a grenade, it'll deactivate it. So you need to be prepared for that, so you need to be prepared to switch modes very quickly. Once you lob that grenade and it goes off, all the enemies in that area who aren't killed by the grenade are going to be aware to your presence. And they're going to come knocking. So you press and hold triangle to access your weapons inventory.
So let's talk about whether or not this game is worth you actually purchasing it. A couple things. Let's talk about the positives. The game is phenomenal. It's really well written. The story is really engaging and intriguing. The character design is great. So it's not just the Koreans that you're going to fight, but there's extraterrestrial um, opposition as well. And there's some fantastic, really um, groundbreaking design there, especially for when the game was released. Um, you know, it is. It's it's gorgeous to look at. The Musical score for it is phenomenal, as you can hear, and this is only just a, a really, real small taste test at the beginning of the game. We're going to watch a cutscene soon, and it's going to show, you know, show off much more of that sort of side of the game. Now, if you own the original Crisis and you had a really kick-ass PC back in the day, or maybe you still do, you, you know, you still have the original Crisis, it's not worth you buying this. Even for the cheap price of $15.99, it's not worth you buying this because you can probably do a better job of running it than the PlayStation 4 can. The opening cutscene of this crushed my PS4. I went onto Reddit and I had a look and it turns out it's actually fairly common. It doesn't always happen, sometimes just rebooting the game and trying again can fix it and you can get over it. But there are some players who have had to just skip that scene outright. PlayStation 4 Plus might do a slightly better job. But it seems to be a common enough problem. Now, if they patch it, great. But we've yet to see a patch. If you never played Crisis before, or you had Crisis, but your PC wasn't really up to doing the job, and what you see here in this preview looks better than that, then it might be worth it. It's worth it for me because I never owned the original game. I played it on a mate's PC, got to play it occasionally. So I know what it's about. I've played it before and enjoyed it. But. It's nice to own my own copy and be able to experience it with, you know, nice looking graphics. So 7 out of 10 I would give it because of that crashing. 8 out of 10 if it wasn't for that crashing and they patch it. That's because the movement is kind of frustrating by today's standards. I think the suit's a bit too restrictive in terms of the energy. But yeah, 7 out of 10 with the crashes. If they fix that, 8 out of 10. Definitely worth it if you've never played it before though. You can skip those issues. So it's still playable and enjoyable. Anyway, let's watch this uh, cutscene. Thanks for joining us. Hope you enjoyed the review. I'm not buying that locate and evacuate bullshit anymore. Yeah. Since when do the North Koreans have themselves a motherfucking freeze ray? Damn straight! I feel like I jumped into a bloody comic book here! I've told you everything you need to know. That's bollocks and you know it! Aztec is dead and we ain't got the first idea what killed him! I saw him up close, boss. He was mutilated, ripped in two. I mean, what are we dealing with here? Cause it ain't just Korean. Jester's right. If this Rosenthal guy was a proper nut, we wouldn't be here! Cut the crap, psycho! You've all been fully briefed. Our job is to find those people, and that's what we're going to do. We're moving out now, what the and fuck? that's in order. Something's here. Holy shit! Ah! Ah! It's got Jester! We have to go! We have to go now! Come on! Move! Move! You see it? Where'd it go? This way! Come on, move! Hey guys, really hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, leave us a thumbs up. Make sure to subscribe so you can get future updates. Until next week, take care and we'll see you soon.